Hello, it's Rafael Gutierrez and Dr. Karate. Uh, this is a YouTube channel where if you guys have watched us before, I try to take the scientific principles and show how it applies to martial arts. Uh, there are a lot of new things that are coming in, which I will talk about. But before, I want to talk to something about something that I've actually found. One is we all have martial art friends. And sometimes we end up hearing stuff from other friends, which really surprises us. For instance, uh, I actually was talking to someone who told me they knew a student of my late teacher. And I got to be honest, I didn't know who this person was. I had never met him before. I thought I knew the people who trained under Taba Sensei. And this guy was saying that he, that I never trained under Taba Sensei, which I thought was kind of interesting because I actually have video of how Taba Sensei used to teach, which was one on one. And he would take a lot of time. I wasn't the one who trained the most with him. The first time I trained with him, I was only there with him for a month. And he actually took me out and trained me with uh, another gentleman who uh, is also one of the people who trained under Taba Sensei, probably the one who trained the longest, uh, who doesn't live in Okinawa. The other uh, time I actually went, and there was another gentleman there, and we trained with Taba Sensei. He left, and I continued. I stayed for another month. The third time I went, uh, Taba Sensei had actually gotten a little sick. I wasn't able to train with Taba Sensei the entire time. Uh, I only was able to see him for about two weeks. And it, again, with Taba Sensei, if you ever trained with him, it was one on one training. He was trying to teach you everything and anything he could. Uh, now, I, when I trained with him, I think it, it was three months later he passed away. And you know, it really did hit a lot of people, and that did happen. Now, one of the things that's interesting is this guy was talking about how, you know, his teacher told him that I didn't never train with Taba Sensei. And when I told him, I actually wrote something. And I told him, look at your teacher's wall. If he has a certificate, a dojo license that is stamped by Taba Sensei when he was alive, you have my, he has my writing on the wall. And like I said, I wrote, it kind of quieted him up. But the thing is, I actually was fortunate in that, now, if someone wanted to badmouth me, but they didn't know, you know, they didn't actually know that my writing was actually on their wall, which I thought was kind of funny. There's only three people who wouldn't have my writing, and that's people who were there before me. Now, besides that, though, I've actually also seen a lot of things in dojos. For instance, we all have friends, and recently I went to a uh, someone's uh, third-degree black belt test, and I saw a lot of things that I thought were really interesting, things that I could take home. Now... One of the things, though, that I, got me thinking is I was actually lucky. I'm lucky that that's what happens, that most of my, the people I know, they have something that I can take home. Every so often, I, I'm walking around and I see a karate demo or I'll look at it on uh, YouTube. Or, uh, and, or the other thing is someone may actually be trying to explain something. And when they start explaining something, they go beyond where their knowledge is. And so they start saying things that are not realistic. Or doing things that are not realistic and actually would be dangerous for the person now the one I'm actually going to talk about today is there's a move I've seen in some katas where someone comes slams grabs and comes up and when I asked someone what they're doing uh, one of them said they were grabbing a body part yanking it off and showing it to their opponent it seemed kind of obsessive excessive but you know whatever it also seemed like it was not quite Correct. And I'll talk about that a little later. That's actually what I'm going to talk about right now. So one of the things I tend to do is whenever something doesn't seem right, I go and evaluate. Now, there's one thing that Taba Sensei told me one time, and that is if you ever want, one of the things that you have to do is your teachers are going to teach you their martial art. They're teaching you stuff that they think works for them. But it's Taba Sensei, it, who was really influential to me, he told me eventually you have to make your own karate. I don't think he meant I have to go branch off and make my own style of karate. I think what he was saying is I have to actually see what works for me and use that. And he also encouraged me to use my mind to examine different things. So one of the things that I actually thought is, look, that tearing off a skin doesn't make sense because skin is actually pretty hard. I've actually found the numbers for how much force it needs to get skin to actually be pulled enough to lose its elasticity, and it was something in the range of 50,000 kilopascals. To give you a a little thing, that's 50,000 
uh, kilograms per uh, square uh, meter. So you have a square meter of skin. You need almost 50,000, a little over 50,000 pounds to actually stretch it to a point where it loses its elasticity. And at that point is when you start tearing. Now, to give it to you a little more simple, if you think of, a, of the size of my fingers, the amount of force you would need to actually tear skin by pinching it and coming out would be, well, the amount of skin that you actually pinch would be about, let's say, four centimeters. Uh, one thumb is about a, you know, two centimeters on roughly, actually, maybe a little less, actually, maybe less. And for you to tear that just by coming like this, use it, we'll use it. You need to produce 500 kilograms of pressure per square centimeter. So 500, you're talking about 1,000 kilos of pressure to rip skin off like that, unless the person is otherwise sick. And then that's actually, I didn't want to stop there because I really wanted to do experimentation. Now, what you see here is part of a pig's feet, pig's foot. And you can see that there is skin here, bring it just a little bit. The top layer here is skin, and then underneath it, you have uh, pretty much connective tissue. So, what I wanted to do is I wanted to show a couple things. One is, I actually did get a knife because I want to show also, and this is probably going to be for next week, how much pressure you really need to cut something. Now, just to show you how sharp this knife is, piece of paper, you can see, not torn yet. If I take it like this and just go across like this, you can see that it tear it cuts pretty simply. I went toward. A couple times. So what you see is it isn't a thin blade. It's not a dull blade knife. It is a thin, it is a sharp blade. And if I were to grab it like this and hit, it would probably do damage if you think about it. Most people, when they're dealing with knife cuts, they're cutting here. Some people will actually slash, some people will actually hit and drag across. And that's how a knife really works. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to cut, dissect a piece of my skin, and I'm going to show you the layers of skin. Now, skin is actually an interesting tissue, and I, I'm talking as I'm cutting the pig, because it's actually made up of three different tissue types. You have the dermis, the epidermis, and subcutaneous layer. And here I got, got a little piece of skin. Now, if you think about it, this thing actually does have some connective tissue. So, and in any body part, excuse me, you would have some sort of connective tissue which keeps the skin from tearing off. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually get rid of the connective tissue. So, that's enough of that. So, one of the things you'll notice is skin actually didn't cut too easy. Even with a sharp knife, I cut across the skin. I still have a lot of things I want to go into. And that's actually, you can see how thick skin really is. Now, yes, this is pig's skin. Uh, one of the things I did find is human skin it ranges in between the thickest and thinnest that pig, uh, pig skin can be. So. Now, human skin is somewhere between what this could be or what it couldn't be. Now, if you think about it, if you grab your pig skin and you try to tear it off, you notice that that doesn't happen. Think about it. For what I'm actually pulling, I need almost uh, 5,000, I'm sorry, 500 kilograms of force. It's not going to tear. If you think you're going to be able to grab and pull something, a chunk of meat off, a chunk of skin off, you really have... To, uh, I really would recommend trying to take some pig skin. If you don't like my pig skin, you can find your own. And you can see what actually works for you. Now, uh, I do have to wash my hands, and I'm going to pause it, uh, turn this off. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you can see that you know some of the moves that people teach don't necessarily work. You're not going to tear skin off with your bare hands. It's actually hard enough to do it with your uh, knife. If you don't believe me, talk to someone who uh, does hunting and needs to clean up or a butcher. And they will tell you the same thing. Skin is actually hard to cut. You need sharp and specialized knives. Now, if you're slashing or slicing, that's one thing. But if you actually are thinking that you're going to grab and pull away, 
it doesn't it skin doesn't work that way it doesn't tear that easy i hope you enjoyed this and uh if you do uh please help support the channel by either buying one of my books i have off the rails serious and the rarest things and breaking points now breaking points is more of a how to use uh pinan as a uh, how to use how to look at bunkai and pinan uh the other thing i'm actually doing is right now i'm working on a i'm actually working on three projects one of them is a revamping of the anatomy book that i've actually had which is just called human anatomy clinical approach i took it off so i can make it better but i haven't i haven't put it on yet it should be up in a couple weeks and this is actually just a way to learn basic human anatomy uh, the other one i'm actually going to do is one called uh, uh, body movements for martial art this is actually is going to go through all the kinesiology in martial arts it should be a pretty nice sized book it's only going to the anatomy wise it's going to be going to bones muscles uh, nerves ligaments and tendons it's not going to go into the gi tract and other things you would need if you it would just be the technically the one i'm actually working on is the book you need if you're going to be trying to understand how to get more power in your craft uh with that i'll sign off and uh have a good day uh, like i said this is a two-part there is more i'm going to do with skin so you'll see me with the same shirt thank you and have a nice